Hi, and welcome to our presentation on self-determination and customized employment. My name is Chad Bouchard, and I am the Self-Determination and Employment Coordinator with CBI Consultants. It is my pleasure to speak with you today. CBI Consultants offers a variety of support options to help team members improve an individual's quality of life. CBI's training includes self-directed employment groups that focus on completing the entire customized employment process efficiently in a group setting with a special focus on self-determination. Middle school self-determination curriculum designed for younger participants who are just starting to learn the concepts of self-determination. The curriculum focuses on self-regulation, goal setting, choice making, self-monitoring, and development of social and relationship skills. Secondary school two-level self-determination curriculum with focus on self-discovery and creation of the self-directed life plan in level one and utilization of that plan to achieve the employment goals in level two. As part of this curriculum, participants learn about their likes, dislikes, strengths, talents, and learning style. Students create their own sets of SMART goals and action plans in a number of life domains with a special focus on employment. Customized Employment Video Modeling Series, Creating Success in Employment, which teaches participants the right way to react in 55 unique employment scenarios. Customized Employment Online Level 1 and 2 Training, our flagship customized employment training offering designed for employment specialists and anyone else supporting individuals through the customized employment process. CBI is also able to customize training and develop workshops, tests, and tutorials that fit all of your training needs. Our mission is to help individuals to achieve a higher quality of life. We believe that all citizens have the right to be included in their schools and communities, have rich social lives, and have access to real work for real pay. This year, we are celebrating our 25th anniversary of helping individuals with complex developmental, mental health, and behavioral needs. During that time, we've supported over 10,000 people. We've also been doing customized employment for the past eight years with a focus on self-determination the last four. We are focused on evidence-based practices in all that we do. Our first video introduces the success of self-determination seen through the eyes of a parent, an educational assistant, and an employer. Let's watch. I think it's a very, a very important process and that it has a, a huge impact on the students that go through the process in um, helping them to mature and develop and take ownership over their goals and their, their life and, um, and their own plans. And I think it's really important and valuable. I, it, the comments are this, this program was very, very, very beneficial uh, for Eric and um, to the point that I would say it was life-changing in terms of um, taking him on a path where he could be really successful at something he loves and you know be earning his own paycheck and be really proud of that so I think it's it's a really important program I think that it's something we need to expand on in the school system and the all the organizations involved and not only expand on it but I, I would like to see it be mandatory it's just done a world of good for Eric. I think self-determination is really important because it's funny because um, as an EA and I'm also a child and youth care worker, of course we work really hard to be advocates for the people that we work with. Um, but one word that I like that um, people in my industry use is we like to be enablers. Um, so sure, we want to be advocates for the people that we work with, but we also want to enable them and it's really important that as much as possible that we allow them to make their own choices in their lives. So I think self-determination is really important. Um, and I think that happened with Eric. Like I said, sure, we had a good idea that he enjoyed woodworking, um, but we did ask him, you know, what would you like to do after high school? What kind of job would you like to have? And without any prompting, he did say that he liked to be working in woodworking. Um, so that was, you know, that was his choice. And I think it's really important that as much as possible that we um, just like everybody else, um, everybody needs the, the, the freedom to make choices in their own life. So whenever possible, 
Uh, it's important that as much as we want to support the people that we work with, as much as we're, you know, we're advocates, we have to make sure that we're uh, allowing them to make their own decisions in their lives as much as possible. When Eric first started work at BC Woodworks, he would look like shy and uh, you need to call him two, three times before he will come and start a task. Now, if he's not doing anything and once his machine or his working environment place is ready, you look at him, signal him, and he will come quickly. And he will be ready, prepared beforehand to start the work. Well, Eric, Eric seems to, as we did, Eric seems to have focused on what he wants to do. Uh, up until this whole series of events where he went and did the summer program and the dislikes and the IEP and all that stuff, uh, like I say, I don't think he found any sense in stuff in school. It didn't. It was stuff you had to do, but it didn't. It, it didn't have relevance to him. He seems to have found relevance in the fact that he wants to build stuff, and now he actually talks about selling it. Up until uh, up until the last year or so, he wouldn't sell or anything. That stuff was his, and it filled his room. The only person he gave it to was his dog. His dog, every Christmas, got a whole pile of gifts of woodwork that Eric did, but that was the only person. <laughs> if we look at it f from the perspective of something like the IEP, I, to, to me, I, I don't think there's any other way. When I think of all of the other, and literally all of the other IEPs handed down by well-meaning, albeit well-meaning uh, people, but it's like Eric needn't even have been in the room for when I think back of all the other IEPs. And I think in some cases he wasn't. Uh, this was the first time where Eric was involved and took ownership. And I think it actually meant something to him for a change. I don't think he had a clue what IEPs were before. Uh, so that whole business of being involved, taking some ownership because it's about you and it's about things you want to do not what the school thinks he should be doing or what whatever the discipline issue is. I mean, <laughs> to me, the discipline just goes away if the person has a buy-in and, and they have uh, interest. And that's what, that's what we got from this. Eric was interested and part of it, and it was about him, not about being told what to do. So on that basis, it's great. Well, the only other comment I would like to say is the uh, the interest that seemed to come out of the the aides uh, at the school. I'm not saying they were disinterested uh, before uh, this project started, but when Eric showed them the IEP, suddenly they were talking about doing the same process with all the other students, and I think that was fantastic. The uh, there were, there was a, an energy seemed to come out of it which was totally unexpected by me and uh, amongst the other staff seeing what Eric was doing and saying, well, there's no reason why these other students couldn't do that. So I think that's great and I would strongly encourage doing it with everybody if, if it's possible. From the video, we see a number of positive outcomes that Eric has achieved from self-determination and customized employment. Now let's take a closer look at the evolution of customized employment from the 1960s to where we are today. In the 1960s, Mark Gold was one of the leading pioneers in recognizing that all people can learn and be employed in meaningful tasks and duties. In the late 80s, we moved to person-centered planning and customized employment. Now we're finding out about a job seeker's strengths, talents, interests and abilities and matching that to the employer's wants and needs. The third wave, which we'll discuss more in detail today, involves customized employment with explicit self-determination instruction. We are supporting the job seeker in recognizing what their strengths are, how to create SMART goals, and create and complete action plans to reach not only their employment goals, but goals in all of their other life domains. These domains include relationships, future education, community, recreation, leisure, social skills, and travel. In the future, we will have integrated inclusive classrooms with explicit self-determination and customized instruction for everyone. 
There are many important component elements of self-determined behavior. Self-determination is about having the individual develop and being able to make choices pertaining to their lives, having them involved in decision-making and problem-solving situations that affect them. It is about developing goal-setting skills, being able to create and achieve SMART goals, helping increase an individual's independence, developing risk-taking and safety skills, being able to self-advocate for themselves in a variety of situations, including workplace, school, recreation opportunities, developing self-observation, evaluation skills, developing an internal locus of control, and having more self-knowledge and self-awareness of who they are, their likes, strengths, and skills. This leads to many benefits of using self-determination in conjunction with customized employment. From a client's perspective, they become more able to advocate for themselves and recognize any supports or modifications they may need in the work site. They also advocate for what job they would like and why, which could lead to advancement or promotion opportunities. They become more involved in choice making and making decisions on things that matter to them. The client becomes more goal focused as they are now involved in the creation of their goals and knowing what their goals are. The team family and client are more involved and aware of the job search process and the expectations involved in it. Client develops increased confidence. The skills that are learned in self-determination instruction are transferable to all life domains and help lead to an increased quality of life, whether we're speaking about employment, social skills, relationship building, community, or transportation. From the employer's perspective, we are seeing more focused employees. The employees are now driving the process and becoming a self-advocate in terms of what support may be needed or what adaptations or modifications may be required. The employer becomes more of a guide and support. The employer sees a higher job retention rate as the new employee is now more involved in the process and involved in making their own decisions. Better match of a job seeker's skills and the employer's wants. Job expectations are more visible and the new employee is more a part of the whole process. I would like to give you a little background on where we started and why we started with self-determination instruction. CDI consultants started doing customized employment in 2008 and since that time have placed 194 job seekers in real work for real pay positions, including self-employment. What we quickly realized is that the job seeker wasn't aware of the process and would be calling us to ask us where their job was. They are unaware of the employment process and even recognizing what their skills, strengths, talents, and abilities were. A few of our job seekers were motivated and self-determined though, which led us to the research and to develop a curriculum to help support all job seekers to acquire self-determination skills. The job seekers we were supporting at that time didn't know the employment process or the natural process of getting a job. This included discovering what job is a fit for them, how to create a resume, how to drop off a resume, interview skills, what to wear to an interview, or how to prepare for an interview. The expectations at the workplace, which included scheduling, what to talk about in the lunchroom, harassment, Employment Standards Act, calling in sick or asking for help. The job seekers are always going to be relying on services and being a part of that service continuum, as we weren't supporting or assisting them in acquiring the skills to get off of it. If they wish to find a new job or advanced in their current position, they are always going to be relying on support from an outside agency or person. The clients should be a part of the process and leading it. This is about them, their skills, goals, and aspirations. We should only be there to support and assist them in helping achieve these goals. The team needed to be more involved. They are a great resource to the job seeker in regards to networking and supporting them at home or out in the community. By combining self-determination instruction and customized employment, we have found that discovery, job development, and job coaching have become more efficient and effective. The job seeker is more a part of the process in telling us where they would like to work, why they would like to work there, and what supports or adaptations they may require. We're able to work on other life domains. Customized employment and self-determination is still a person-centered process, and supports are provided by the employment specialist when needed. But now the process is driven by the job seeker, not the employment specialist. We started with self-determination instruction in 2010 with a small pilot project with Burnaby Association for Community Living and the Burnaby School Board. 
The first class consisted of four students from four different schools in Burnaby. Since 2010, we have delivered the curriculum to 48 locations and over 356 participants across British Columbia, Ontario, and the Yukon. So what is self-determination? A great quote from James Martin and Laura Marshall on what a self-determined person is. A self-determined person is one who sets goals, makes decisions, sees options, solves problems, speaks up for himself or herself, understands what supports are needed for success, and knows how to evaluate outcomes. Now let's watch a short clip on the theory of self-determination developed by Edward Dicey and Richard Ryan in 1985. So there's another piece to SDT that I'd like to talk about, and that's um, the fact that, that we have hypothesized within self-determination theory that all human beings have certain fundamental psychological needs. We've specified three. We talk about the importance of feeling competent that in your life you try to do lots of things. You're studying in school, you might have a job, you're playing tennis, you're doing, um, on the computer doing video games. There are all kinds of things you're doing in life. And it's important to you to feel like you're doing well at that. When you do well at it, you feel satisfied, excited, when you consistently do badly at something, you don't feel good about yourself at all. You know, one of the things that happens if you really fail enough tests, or at least one possibility, is you begin to get depressed and just feel anxious and bad about yourself, for instance. Well, the idea of a need is something that you really have to have satisfied in order to really be psychologically healthy and effective. And the first one that I've already mentioned is competence. That's an important thing for people. And it turns out from all the research that we've done, it's important for people whatever country they're in, whatever level of socioeconomic status they are, they're at, it's necessary. Some people might even say it's not important to them, and yet if they don't feel competent, you can predict reliably that they're going to show negative psychological consequences. The second psychological need that um, we believe to be important and that has lots of evidence indicating that it is, is the need for what we call relatedness. Having meaningful contact and relationships with other people. So, when you have friends, when you sometimes have romantic partners or spouses even, there are people in your life that you feel really close and connected with and you feel satisfied with your life to a substantial degree. It's very important to people to have that kind of connection. And when you feel rejected, you feel bad and you feel rejected enough and you start to think, oh, I'm an unworthy person, nobody likes me, I'm not likable. And again, a range of negative psychological consequences. So that's the second of the needs. The third need um, that we think is important is really in some ways more complex and interesting than either of the others and therefore somewhat more controversial. And that's the need for autonomy. It's our belief that each one of us, deep within us, has the desire and the need to feel like we're really regulating our own lives. We are not just puppets with other people pulling the strings. We are not just pawns being moved around a chessboard. We are people who are making choices about ourselves and what we're doing and what we want to do and how we're going to do it and so forth. And that when we experience a sense of autonomy, then we feel like really excited, engaged, interested in, in what we're doing. From watching the video, we have learned that for a person to be self-determined, they need autonomy, the opportunity to make choices that pertain to them and who they are, competence, being able to gain rewards when they're successful through their own efforts, relatedness, being able to form secure attachments and to make friends and have relationships in their lives. Not paid relationships, but real friendships. We want to help support individuals to acquire these skills 
and provide a safe place to practice and develop them. The research has also shown what happens if we don't acquire self-determination skills. Self-determination skills need to be explicitly taught. Some job seekers will pick up these skills, but most will not. Many individuals leave the school system without these skills and will have a harder time obtaining and keeping employment, living on their own, recognizing what supports are out there for them, advocating for their needs and rights, and being able to set and achieve goals. This led us to develop a self-determination curriculum with the creation of the participant self-directed life plan at the end of level one. Now the participant is telling us what is important to them, their SMART goals and action plans to achieve those SMART goals. We are more of a guide to help assist and support them in achieving these goals. The self-directed life plan is meant to be used in conjunction with the school's IEP. The self-directed life plan is created at the end of level one. The participant uses the information learned about themselves to create it after 30 hours of instruction. A self-directed life plan can be created however the participants want. It can be a video, PowerPoint, poster board, song, or play. It is a representation of the participants' goals, action plans, and who can help support them to achieve them. Now let's take a look at some self-directed life plans from Carson Graham Secondary School. The white dogs. And we the white plants. My goal is to make more friends and hang out with them. I will try to make both be friends for other activities. At least three times a week. I will do something nice like. Give them a hug, I'll say that to them. I will continue with tea club three times a week. book and it had four words on it and Naomi got very very good at, at touching each of the squares for words. Hello my name is uh, Cheyenne and I'm going to be doing my uh, self-directed life plan. First of all, employment. The goal is to uh, work detailing cars I'll have to take a course in uh, automotive painting and uh, finishing program. Second one, apprenticeship, which I'll have to take. And then I'll have to research all the jobs on uh, Vancouver and Rock Band. Now this one, housing. I will, uh, I'll go to continue to live with my parents. I'll have to help them out financially clean the house and uh, help them out with the property taxes. Hello, my name is Paul Moore. This is myself as a director of the Credit Life Plan. This goal is employment, finish a job, find a job, and a justice uh, security kill. Go on to post secondary education, make your contacts, um, look for a job, education, go up into 
Hi, my name is Baby. Welcome to my IEP reading. Today, I'm going to tell you a deep you all about me and tell you what the my goal do. I don't want to think like that, girl. Wanting to be a person I can't know myself. One of the movies, listening to my, listening to music, and listening to my gaming, going on in the community. And the most of the things I do, like, sometimes the animal make me nervous. Loud and loud and noisy. When people don't, and then my beats. And the only thing I get is, is oh, remember everything? I can English and all those things. Walk on and die to come. I'm about my disability. I have, I have the evil body. And this is something I do, I was born with. Having the way both body makes me have a deep gold time speaking, giving my nose, my video. Oh, I like the new world. And those of the days, I would like to keep my independence. Five years from now, I would like to live in Texas. The mother thinks I would like the devil. Oh, they play with Lord Vegas and how are you? Thank you for coming. Have a better day. You see where my job good, good schooling is? Number two is take to work on my speaking and writing and all my stuff like I learned in school back then. Then four is to see where I can go for further education number two is my activities and friends to meet them at coffee shops or libraries. Then we can discuss what we did during the week. Number Here's an example of a PowerPoint presentation. Remember, a self-directed life plan can be done however the participants wants. Let's take a look at Richie's PowerPoint. The first few slides we can see Richie's likes, what he is good at, and what makes him unique. 
Richie has come up with this information on his own with support from his employment specialist. From just looking at the first few slides of Richie's self-directed life plan, we can start to get an idea of Richie's ideal conditions of employment. Now let's take a look at some of Richie's goals and action plans. Here we notice Richie's employment goal and his action plan to achieve this goal. I am happy to report that Richie has achieved his employment goal as he's been working at White Spot for over two years. Here we can see Richie's travel goal and his action plan in order to achieve this travel goal. Richie has also achieved his travel goal as he's just got back from Vegas a few months ago and he paid for his room on his own. Here we notice Richie's housing goal. As we can see, Richie still plans on living at home. But the nice thing with the self-directed life plan is that Richie recognizes what he needs to do to remain living at home. With the self-directed life plan, the participant is now a part of the process. They are involved in setting their goals and we are learning what goals are important to them. From the research, we recognize that these goals are more likely to be achieved as the participant now has input on what these goals are. Level 1 of our self-determination curriculum ends with the development of the participant's self-directed life plan. Level 1 is where the participant is learning about themselves, their likes, their dislikes, their strengths, talents, and learning styles. It is a self-discovery of oneself with support as needed. Level 2 is having the participant involved in all aspects of the customized employment process. The curriculum is about 57 hours in length and comes with a facilitator's guide, 10 participants handbook, 10 home support handbooks, an adaptations guide, and a DVD. Level 1 looks at the self-discovery of the participant. They're learning about their strengths, likes, dislikes, challenges, learning styles, dreams, and SMART goals. Using all this information, they will then create a self-directed life plan in a visual format of their choosing, with support as needed. Level 2 uses information learned from Level 1 and supports the participant in achieving their employment goal. We look at the natural process of the job search and go over such things as creating a resume, developing a cover letter, networking, how to drop off a resume, who to speak to when dropping off a resume, and how to follow up. In level two, we also look at social coaching on the work site, how to talk to new employees, dealing with stress, new situations, working with others, how to keep your job. It is these social situations which can cause a lot of our job seekers to have difficulties in the workplace and beyond. Both levels, we use a number of different strategies and teaching techniques. These include video modeling, worksheets, role plays, guest speakers, mentors, and interactive group activities. The sessions use explicit teaching in an explicit manner. We have found that video modeling is a very effective strategy to help support our job seekers in the workplace. We have created a six video series which goes over the job search process and can help develop further discussion in regards and how to keep a job, the unwritten workplace rules and etiquette, what it means to work, and how to react in various social situations. The videos focus on a number of social vignettes which have given our job seekers trouble in the past. Each video comes with a handbook for the employment specialist and the job seeker to use as a further learning opportunity. Now let's watch some sample scenarios from our customized employment video series. Let's watch the same scenario again and see what happens. What time is it? Oh wow, it's 3.30. The bus is usually here at 3.15. Must be running late today. I better call work to let them know that I might be a few minutes late. Hello? Hi, Ashley, it's Ben. Hi, Ben, how are you? Good, hey, I just wanted to let you know that the bus seems to be running late today, so I may be a few minutes late to work. Oh, okay, well, thank you for letting me know. You're welcome, I'll get there as soon as I can. Great, see you when you get here. All right, bye now. Bye. From this scenario, we notice that John called his boss as soon as he knew he may be late. John was respectful of his father employees. John knew his work schedule and what time he was supposed to be at work. John cared about his work. 
and he still called to inform his boss that he may be late. From watching the scene, did you notice anything that John could have done differently? Now let's watch Steve and Jennifer in the lunchroom and see what they talk about. I went to the movies over the weekend. Oh, did you? What movie did you see? I saw Star Wars. Yeah, it's very good. I liked it. It was fun. What did you do over the weekend? I went to the Canucks game. The Canucks game? I love the Canucks. Yeah, it was too bad they lost, though. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing this weekend? Anything fun? I think I'm going to go bowling. Bowling's cool. At least you'll be inside, because I heard it's going to rain. Yeah, I don't like the rain. No. Actually, look, it's raining today, even. It's bad out. Yeah. How's work going today? It's fun. Yeah, it's pretty busy, isn't it? It's good. It's busy. Yeah. In this scenario, we noticed that they talked about activities. I went to the movies this weekend. What did you do over the weekend? Sports. I saw the Canucks game on Friday. Did you watch the Canucks game this weekend? Personal interests. Hiking, bowling, skating, movies, music. Weather. What's the weather like? Food. What type of food do you like? And work. How was your day at work? Could Steve and Jennifer have done anything differently in this scene? Now let's watch the same scenario and see what Bill does differently this time. Uh, get it. Sally, would you like me to show you the way I do it? Sure. It may make it easier for you. Sometimes these are very tough. So hold up one side and then like that. And it goes in nicely. Do you want to try with that end? Sure. Yes, and then push in tight. And then you can do the top like that. Oh. Yeah. Good. Nice. Now I can put the paper in. In this scenario, we saw Bill use his social filter. He helped Sally with making the box. He didn't make Sally feel bad. He worked as part of a team, and he was respectful of Sally's feelings. Did you notice anything that Bill could have done differently? For the job seeker, combining customized employment and self-determination leads to the job seeker becoming an active decision maker in the process. They are more aware of their employment goals and are more actively involved in reaching them. This leads to the employment specialist becoming more of a guide and support. Now let's watch a short video from Belinda McKinnon and Pam Newman from the Vancouver School District. they're changing internally. I don't think yes. they're going back. Yes, they're not going back to being, um, you know, like we say, we're doing, we're not doing it for them, we're doing it with them now. So they're now completely different individuals. Yes, that's a good point. They're changing internally. And they have hope, they have hope now. So I have five kids that are in grade 12. They, they're all looking forward to the transitioning out of high school. They're looking forward to that. They have a plan. They have goals. They know they're going to be supported. It's very exciting. When we were ready to create the self-directed life plan, we paired up with another class, a tourism class. And that class sat with our students and paired up and created the life plan. They put all the information in into the life plan and created these beautiful life plans. So it was very cool what happened um, because it, it really happened very organically. Like these students were just going to, they needed to do a bit of their coursework on working with kids with special needs. And so Belinda approached the classroom teacher and said, you know, we need some tech support. Can you just help us, you know, d develop a template and help us put the stuff in? So the kids developed these really kind of cool relationships with these kids. And at the very end, um, when they were presenting, they were given the opportunity how much support they would need. So it went, and all the students 
who helped were at the presentation. And there was a range of support that they gave depending on their relationship. So some students, their partner, their helping partner sat in the audience. Other kids were up there, one on each side because the kids who were presenting were nervous. And so they were just either gently prompting them to like giving them a little elbow, what, you know, it's your next line, or they were actually you know, swiping the pages for the student. So it, and, and the students led that themselves. So they said how much support they needed. And then um, the, the kids in the tourism class just stepped up to whatever was needed. But what was really cool was um, I did a questionnaire of the students after, very, very simple questionnaire. And on it was like, have you ever um, had met kids with special needs? And then what were your feelings on doing this before you did this? And then how have your feelings changed about this population of students after? And it was anonymous. I said, do not put your name on it. Well, I got 100% return rate. So every single student filled it out. And the responses that I got were unbelievable. Like most of the kids said, I'd never had any experience working or, or even interacting with the person with special needs. Even though my locker was right next to this kid for years, and all of them said they're exactly like us. They're just like me and just like my friends. They have the same hopes, the same dreams. It's really cool. They just need a little extra support. And so now I, and then I even put, would you be interested in doing more of this? Every single student said yes, that they'd be interested in working with this population or supporting this population or hanging out with this population. Like the responses were amazing. And now I believe that, you know, they talk to each other in the hallway. They're not just these, you know, kids that they don't notice. Now they'll, they know their names, they say hi, they ask them questions. You know, it really opened up the door to communication and inclusive opportunities for our students and, and opened up the eyes of these typical kids who some of them were a little nervous because they just didn't know what to say. But then when they got involved, they realized, well, just, you know, be yourself and they had these great relationships with these kids. So we've just continued that. So with the visual portfolios, now we have peer tutors helping them create the visual portfolios. We're not doing that. Their peers are. Yeah. So, you know, in terms of inclusion, it's fantastic because, you know, our kids, when we have these program classes, you know, the kids tend to stay inside the walls of the program class more and then they go out from time to time, but there's not so much the opportunity of people coming in more unless they're kind of visitors. Mm -hmm. But now it feels to me like the door is wider open and the walls are coming down and the kids are now part of the community more. Yes, I had a student that in the past um, didn't participate at all in IEP meetings. And then she had her life plan and she had the whole team there and she stood with the screen with her self-directed life plan behind her and she went through all of her goals and the social worker was taking notes, which is pretty incredible. So, right. she, so she directed the meeting. It was all about her and then they would ask her questions about her goals. It was all about how to support her and her goals and her future. And she talked through the whole meeting. <laughs> which, you know, which has lent itself to going beyond just the social workers, but also kids, um, when we start to talk about transition planning, I have had kids uh, transition meetings where kids have had their self-directed life plan in with the CLBC facilitator. So instead of going through that huge long discovery process where they ask all those questions in the most artificial setting and you know people are nervous and they're not getting the real student and the real family because it's everybody's so nervous. The kid is sitting with their self-directed life plan and you know the facilitators are wow, like you already have it all figured out. And so then they just have to, you know, fill in the blanks about how they want to support the student, but the student's guiding that process as opposed to the facilitator coming in and saying, this is what we have, this is what we have available for you. I mean, every single student should be, all the IEPs should be led by the students. There should Absolutely. be self-directed IEPs. And I can't tell you the number of high schools I go into, mm -hmm. the number of IEP meetings, and there is never a student no, yeah, very common. in an IEP meeting. Yeah. And I think it should start in grade eight. You can start it in grade eight. You don't have to do all of it, but you can take pieces of it and you can have a plan and that plan should follow them a part of their IEP. Absolutely. I really, really strongly believe that this 
self-determination, this curriculum, should be um, a mandatory requirement for every student graduating from high school. So students who are in grade 10 and getting a Dogwood certificate have um, a requirement in, in their grad portfolio of doing Planning 10. Our students, or any student graduating with an Evergreen or a school leaving certificate does not have that requirement. And I firmly, firmly believe that this is a foundational skill that no student should ever leave the confines of high school without self-determination, a, a curriculum on self-determination. So I think it's critical that we get this as a mandatory requirement for students leaving at the bare minimum. With this, through the research, we've also seen that self-determination can and should be started at an even younger age. This will give our children opportunities to learn skills such as choice making, decision making, problem solving, and goal setting. Recent research has also shown that self-determination emerges throughout the lifespan and that we should be supporting an individual to learn it. With deliberate facilitation, we can help support individuals to learn and practice some essential elements such as decision making and goal setting. We need to help support our children in learning the foundational self-determination skills such as self-regulation, choice making and simple problem solving, and social skills. We have developed a middle school self-determination curriculum which is currently being piloted in Coquitlam. The curriculum is focused on self-regulation, goal setting, choice making, self-monitoring, self-reinforcement, and the development of social skills. CBI Consultants offers a number of customized employment and self-determination training options designed to help support an individual improve their quality of life. We have a middle school self-determination curriculum, level one and level two secondary school curriculum, customized employment video strategy series, our customized employment online training, and we are able to customize training and workshop development for you and your team. Our next steps involve the creation of a self-directed employment group in your community, which would include all aspects of our Level 1 and Level 2 Secondary School Self-Determination Curriculum with customized employment. We would then be looking to expand this into all of the individual's life goals and support them in practicing self-determination. It is a person-centered process and would be delivered in a group setting. For more information on today's presentation or in any one of our training options, please feel free to email me at chad at cbiconsultants.com or call me at 604-484-8900. Thanks again for your time and have a great day.